Okay, this lesson is on loans, closed, and credit. So, um, have you, or do you know anyone who's taken out a loan? Um, the top reasons for taking out loans are for vehicles, 31%, to pay bills, 26%, for emergencies, 21%, tuition, 19%, and debt consolidation, 15%. After today's lesson, you will use your knowledge learned to compare loans to get the best deal for your needs. To review, there's two main categories of consumer credit. We talked about open end credit in the previous lesson. Open to end or revolving credit can be used repeatedly for purchases that will be paid back monthly, though paying the full amount due every month is not required. For example, credit cards, home equity line of credit. Today we're going to focus on closed end credit, one-time loan that you pay back over time and payments of equal amounts such as auto loans and mortgages. So consumer loans, uh, installment credit or closed end credit closes or ends when the loan is paid in full. Steps for the loan process include number one, you apply for the loan at a lender, a bank or credit union. Uh, two, the lender checks your credit and approves your loan. Three, you make monthly payments for an agreed amount of time. And then four, when the loan is paid in full, the loan ends and you're done paying on it. I'm going to watch this YouTube video. Vacation memory. It didn't actually begin here. This memory began. Meet Lucy. Lucy has been working at Corporate Co. for the past three years. Since her first day on the job, Lucy has seen her colleagues refinance loans, purchase cars, and even buy houses. Lucy wants to be like them, and there's just one problem. All these activities require loans, and Lucy just doesn't feel confident handling them. What should she do? Well, her first step is simple. Understand how loans work. On their most basic level, loans are simply borrowed money. Lenders, such as banks and credit unions, can get borrowers, such as Lucy, a fixed amount of money called principal, like $10,000 to buy a car. However, the bank isn't giving Lucy this money for free. In addition to requiring her to pay back her principal, they'll also require her to pay a certain amount of money each month, called interest, just for using their money. In addition, if her loan is secured, as many are due to their attractive interest and approval rates, the bank can actually seize the asset, in this case her car, if she fails to repay. So how is this interest calculated exactly? Let's explain through an example. Let's say Lucy's $10,000 car loan comes with a 5% annual interest rate. Divide that 5% by 12 months, and you get roughly 0.4%, the monthly interest rate. That means Lucy owes the bank 0.4% of her outstanding principal each month. While this seems reasonable enough, interest rates also come with three more complications. One, not all interest rates are fixed. Some called variable interest rates, can change over time, often quite dramatically. Because of this, they can be quite risky, especially on long-term loans. 2. The interest rate of a loan is not the same thing as its APR. APR includes both the interest rate, either fixed or variable, and the fees. Thus, when comparing loans to see which is cheaper, Lucy should always use the APR, not the interest rate. 3. APRs are highly dependent on your credit score. As the lower your score, the higher your APR. For more details on this, be sure to check out our video, Credit Scores and Reports 101. So that's interest rates. But unfortunately, they aren't Lucy's only concern. She must also pay back, or amortize, a certain amount of her principal each month. This payment, combined with interest, makes up Lucy's total loan payment, which is the money she has to pay the bank each month. Should Lucy want to calculate this number herself, all she'll need is an online calculator, like ours, and three numbers, the amount of money borrowed, the interest rate, and the length of the loan, also known as its term. The term is a critical number, especially when choosing a loan. That's because, in general, the shorter the term of the loan, the greater your monthly loan payment. This should make sense. After all, the less time you give yourself to repay the loan, the more you have to pay each month to compensate. And while this may seem bad, shorter term loans can actually be great for two reasons. One, they come with inherently lower interest rates, and two, 
Because their monthly payments are much larger, the borrower is forced to pay down the principal much faster, which ultimately means less interest charged over the life of the loan. This fact is so important that we'll repeat it. The shorter you can make your loan, either through extra debt repayments or a shorter term loan, the less interest you'll pay in the long run. Hopefully you and Lucy now better understand how loans work. Be sure to watch our next video, which covers everything you need to know about credit score. The four features of a loan are principal, interest, payment, and term. Principal is the total amount borrowed. Interest is the cost of the loan, that's how banks make their money. And the term is the length of the loan and the payment is the amount paid per month. Secured versus unsecured loans. In a secured loan, the lender uses a physical asset to secure its money or use as collateral. If you default on the loan, the lender can seize the asset. Secured loans tend to have lower interest rates. Examples include car loans and mortgages. In an unsecured loan, the lender reports a loan default to the credit bureaus. This will stay on your credit report for a long time. Unsecured loans tend to have higher interest rates. Examples of these are student loans and personal loans. There are many different types of consumer loans, um, installment credit. For example, uh, mortgages for a, a loan for a home, a personal loan, a business loan, a student loan, payday loans, borrow from family members, borrow from retirement or life insurance. Loans to avoid are payday loans. Payday loans, very short term loan, no more than a few weeks, are available through payday lenders. Interest is extremely high. Payday lenders often charge 400%, 500% or much more. Payday loans are usually taken by people with bad credit or no savings as they feel they have no other choice. The process is, step one, the payday lender verifies your bank account and income. Step two, you write a post-dated check for amount plus the interest. And three, funds are deposited into your account. Four, the check is cashed when your paycheck is direct deposited. You should avoid this type of loan. It's very, very costly. Here's TC's two cents. Loans are a great financial tool that allow you to make smart, large purchases that will benefit your future well-being. Loans should not be for buying things you can't afford. Be careful about your loan commitments. It's much easier to commit to a $400 per month payment than writing a check for the total amount of $28,000. Having like when you buy a car. Um, having many loan commitments can crimp the amount of money available per month for discretionary spending and saving. Terms you need to be familiar with when looking for a loan. Fixed versus variable. A fixed rate does not change during the length of a loan. A variable rate can change during the length of a loan. APR as an annual percentage rate is a truer cost of borrowing. APR is the interest rate plus the fees associated with the loan. Compounding frequency is the number of compounding periods in a year. Four means four times a year, which is how often the interest is added to the principal of the loan each year. The greater the compounding frequency, the more money the lender makes from the loan. Am amateurized loan. An amateurized loan has an equal amount in monthly payments. The interest payment is based on the unpaid principal balance at the beginning of the month. As the term of the loan goes on, the interest portion of the monthly payment starts high and will decrease. The principal amount of the payment starts low and will increase. At the end of the loan, the principal balance is zero. So here's an example. Um, a $60,000 loan at 4% over three years. The payment for 36 months will be $1,771.44. And notice that the interest portion goes down and the principal portion goes up with each payment.
Okay. Um, the chart shows graphically what happens to the interest portion and the principal portion of the payment, which stays the same. Monthly payments are the same. The interest portion of the payment decreases and the principal portion increases. Loans can be amortized, interest only, or deferred amortized. Um, interest and principal are paid back in full by the end of the term. Um, interest only is interest is paid back in monthly payments with principal due at the end of the term. Deferred, both interest and principal are due at the end of the term. And you can see how this works. Amateurized, interest and principals paid back in full by the end of the term. For instance, 188 a month, zero due at the end of the loan. $1,322.60 is paid in interest for a total cost of that. Okay. Um, the interest paid with the principal due at the end of the term, you're making a lower monthly payment. Um, but $10,000 is due at the end of the loan. You're going to pay a total of $2,500 in interest for, for that for a total cost. And deferred, no money paid per month. But at the end of the loan, you, you are, you, this, the amount of the loan is due and the uh, interest all at once. The loan to debt ratio, your monthly loan payments, not including your mortgage, should not be over 20% of your net monthly income. Your monthly loan debt, including mortgage with taxes and insurance, should not be over 35% of your gross monthly income. So loans allow you to make smart, larger purchases that will benefit your future well-being. So what you're gonna do now is uh, Go to classroom and there's going to be this doc. You're going to answer some questions about loans based on what you just learned.